Hi, welcome back to the channel, Michelle, and today I'm going to be participating in another collab video. Now, this collab video, the participants choose or focus more on secular curriculum. So I found that really helpful, actually. The last couple collab videos, I found a lot of resources, things that I wasn't even aware of. So I'm really appreciative of these collab videos. I hope you guys are enjoying them as well. I will make sure to link the playlist down below so you can follow along. So the topic for this video is the one curriculum I'm most excited about to use next year. So you're going to get a two part of this. So I'm going to share what I'm most excited to use this summer and then what I'm most excited to use next year because we do year round homeschool. So if you're new to my channel, I have three kids. I have a 10 year old in fourth grade. I have a six year old in first grade and I have a three year old son. I'm homeschooling my two oldest kids and this is our second year of homeschooling. So the thing I wanted to share first is what I'm most excited about for this summer. Now I actually found this on another YouTube channel, Homeschoolology talked about this and showed a brief flip through of it. I thought, oh my God, that is perfect, especially for my oldest. So my 10 year old is definitely getting into that age where she's questioning a lot and I don't want to say argumentative, but she's definitely trying to find her own voice and you know where she fits into things. So I think this is a perfect time to introduce philosophy. Now I did take philosophy in college and to be frank, I was never a big fan of it because I am a very logical person and I struggled with the fact that there aren't definite answers when it comes to philosophy. But I think both my 10 year old and six year old are really going to enjoy this. And I'm going to do a flip around and show you some of the inside and then I'll come back and talk about the other curriculum I am excited about. So this is Philosophy for Kids, 40 Fun Questions That Help You Wonder About Everything by David White, PhD. Now I did find this on Amazon. I'm sure there's other places you can get it too, but here's the overview of the table of contents. You're gonna go over different thoughts. So values, knowledge, reality, critical thinking, so the beginning just talks to you about the importance of philosophy. And what I really like about this book is it talks about how children are naturally curious and in that wonder stage. So this is a great time to talk about philosophy because they don't have a harder time grasping some of these concepts than I think adults do because we tend to get stuck in our own thoughts, our perspectives and things like that. So let's go over to this. So each one is broken down into a question. Are you a fair and just person? And it talks about a situation and then you would choose how you would handle that situation. And it gives you some discussion and prompting questions. And it just continues the discussion going on and it leads into philosophical thought and which philosophical thought would go with what you have chosen and a further thought information, same thing. So question number two is from Aristotle. How do you know who your friends are? Again, you're gonna get a situation. You choose what you would do. It talks about that philosophical thought, further thought. So my plan with this is just to pick one probably once a week and we'll start off just having this discussion. And I think these are really good questions. Should you be rewarded for efforts in school? I think these are really good questions to bring up with my kids. Should you let the little things bother you? Is it your duty to give to charity? So just really good discussion questions that have philosophical thought and history behind them. So I'm really excited to use this with my girls. I think they'll be really into it. So like I said, I'm excited to dive into this this summer and just start some really good conversation. Now for next year, the curriculum I'm most excited to use for next year is uh, what we will be doing for history. We'll be using O Freedom, a Conscious US History Curriculum, second edition. Now in the past, the last two years, we've done Curiosity Chronicles and we did Middle Ages and we've spent this entire year doing Early Modern. And it's been wonderful. I love, and I have a review, I'll link up above Curiosity Chronicles. I love that it gives a world perspective. So my thought with going into history is I want to give a world perspective of events 
and then I want to deep dive into U.S. history. And the thought with that is I want my children to have an understanding of what's going on in the rest of the world before we dive into U.S. history so they have a better idea of how things are being affected in other countries as well as the United States. So they have this broad overview of what's going on. We're going to dive into U.S. history. And when I dive into U.S. history, I wanted our first real exposure to be from a more native indigenous point of view because a lot of U.S. history is very whitewashed. A lot of it is very glorifying certain groups of people while minimizing the impact of others. So I really want their first experience with U.S. history to be from a more indigenous perspective. So that is my plan with that. And then after that, because if you watch my channel at all, I'm very selective on the resources I use, and I tend to choose resources that um, the person writing them are experts in this field. This person is not an expert in their field by any means. That doesn't mean it's not of value. But what I want to do is I want to bring multiple perspectives into history. My original plan was to combine this with core knowledge U.S. history, but after looking at core knowledge U.S. history, it's aimed at seventh grade level. It's really a lot more intense. and We would not be able to do both programs at the same time, so I'm going to split it into two years. So this coming year, we're going to be doing this to get that more indigenous perspective. And then next year, we'll be bringing in the more academically rigorous core knowledge, which Core Knowledge does make an effort to bring in other perspectives and ideas. And it's definitely not as whitewashed as a lot of the curriculum I've seen out there, but it will not go into the depth that O Freedom is going to go into. So that's kind of how I'm going to balance US history. It's going to be a two part. We'll start with this, get that perspective. And then when we're going through something like Core Knowledge US history, we can point out some differences we see from what we learn from this perspective. So that's my overall history plan really quick. And I know I'm going to get this question, so I'm going to address it now. Why did I choose this over River Voices? I think uh, River, Blossom Root River Voices is a great option. And it would seem like that would be more the option I would go with since I tend to lean towards curriculums that pull from credible resources. And I know Blossom and Root River Voices as an entire panel, so you don't have to worry about things like cultural appropriation, things like that. I do really respect that. And there are some things I really like about the program, but overall, there are some things that I ultimately did not like about River Voices. So I'm going to briefly talk about that because I know it's going to be a question of why I chose this over it. So River Voices um, does a is influenced a lot by the Charlotte Mason um, style. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think there are some great things in that particular homeschooling style. But for me, it just does not work. It does not fit the way I teach, the way I learn myself, and it just isn't a good fit. So for example, there's a lot, there's in the student journals, there's map work. I don't, we don't do map work. We don't do any type of oral or written narration. That's just not, that's not something I see value in in my homeschool. That does not mean it's not valuable in your homeschool. But for me personally, those things I don't think are worthy of our time that we can be spending doing other things. So for the books for River of Voices, some are similar. A lot of the books I'm going to show you are, I think, in the advanced pathway of River of Voices. And I like that Oh Freedom, I believe it's third through seventh it's aimed at and i'll get more specific on that when i talk about it but the o freedom brings in some of those um books right away for the younger kids and i really do like the idea of having a lot of contextual knowledge not so and so dumbing it down for the kids or i know there is this concern about age appropriateness and sensitive topics and things like that. That is nothing new in our home. We definitely tackle sensitive topics together. I'm not weary of exposing my kids or discussing horrible things that have happened. I think you can do it in an age appropriate way, even for sensitive learners. So I like that O Freedom takes the books and uses them at a younger age. And they also have an even younger K through second um, option, which I'm gonna show you too. And while looking at the main spines of River of Voices, I find um, my library, well, the library next to the town I live in, has both in them. I wasn't really impressed with them. It was a lot of just 
text and not a lot to it. And one of the things I like about O Freedom is that it brings in a lot of discussion. And that's not something I was really getting a lot or the feel for with River of Voices. They do have different, you know, assignments like research in Native American tribe, things like that. But I want some real deep conversation, discussion questions to talk with my kids about, especially when we're talking about coming from an indigenous perspective. I cannot represent that group of people. So I want to be sure I'm being very respectful one, not doing things like cultural appropriation. But also, I may not know what questions to bring up because I am not from that group and I cannot speak to that group or for that group. So I like that O Freedom brings in that aspect that it prompts me to bring out things that I necessarily wouldn't have seen or known to talk about. Uh, one thing with River Voices, a lot of people, I, I looked at a lot of reviews online, I've looked at it, um, the sample pages, things like that. A lot of people don't seem to finish it or it takes a really long time. I know it's extensive, but ultimately I felt like it was a really big resource list, which is great, but I need something more concise than that. I don't want, you know, three different pathways. I don't want a list of video links. I want it more, the format for me just didn't work. And that's just more of that I'm not the fly by the seat of your pants kind of homeschooler. I need more structure than that. And that's something that I personally wasn't getting from River of Voices. I do like the River of Voices taken into account. It has multiple perspectives. Perspectives. It goes into um, depth with its discussion. So again, this isn't something I, I don't think River of Voices is a bad choice by any means. But for me, this ended up being a better choice. So I'm going to flip you around and I'm going to show you some of the curriculum itself and then I'm going to show you some of the books because I'm really excited about the books. One of the things that while well, looking at this curriculum, looking at the book list and the spines, I was really excited about because I'm familiar with a lot of them already and it's something I've wanted to incorporate in our homeschool. So I'm going to flip you around and show you inside really quick. So this is the O Freedom of Conscious U.S. History, second edition. This is the secular. The original version was had some religious parts in it, but this is completely secular. So this is a downloadable PDF. I just printed it out. It is $50 normally. When I bought it, it was during their website sale. So I bought the this version, so the third through seventh version for Thirty-two forty-nine, and then I got the kids, the younger kids version, with this, which is aimed at K through second, which I'm going to show you in a minute here, it, for thirty-nine dollars. So that it gives you a rough estimate of that, and that's just the downloadable curriculum. It does not include the books that you would need, obviously, for it. But one of the things I love about binders, and one of the reasons I will never go to any type of comb binding machine is it gives you so many options. So this is a two-tone binder. What I love is that it's got multiple pockets. So I can have multiple things in here. So I have both versions in here. I have the third through seventh version first, and then you can see this tab here. I have the K through second version right here. So I'm gonna go over the older version first. So this is, again, it tells you about the curriculum, why she published this. The main areas you're gonna cover in your lessons is discover. So these are your readings from your main textbooks, which I will show you some of those right now. Some of the main textbooks you're gonna be using is an indigenous people, history of the United States, a different mirror for young people, Howard Zinn, a young people's history of the United States, Rethinking Columbus, Heart and Soul, and Before Columbus. And as you can see, a lot of these are similar books you will see to River of Voices, but aimed in a younger grade than um, River of Voices suggest. So those are, you're gonna have storytelling next. So these are your historical fiction. So I did not buy all the historical fiction. What I did with that is I made a list from the book list they give you and I checked my library first. I checked Hoopla, I checked 
Libby, all those resources first, and a lot of them were available on there, which is awesome. So there are a couple that were not, and I did purchase those through thrift books for, you know, three, four, five dollars. So these are some of the historical fiction books we will be reading along. This I've actually read with my kids before. It is an awesome resource if you're looking for it. There's also an adult version of that. But I am excited to get these on our bookshelf and have a more inclusive library in our own house. So those are some, just a few that my library or Hoopla or Libby or those apps that didn't have that I felt would be beneficial for us to have. And then this is the part I really like, this discuss and reflect part. So you're talking about what you just read, you're bringing up conversation. And there's a whole <laughs> how to go about that. It has some suggested resources. And then just questions you can ask with any typical lesson. So I'm going to show you the curriculum summary. So these are the areas it's going to cover. So all the way from ancient native cultures to contemporary issues. So let's look at week one here. So we have that discover part. You're going to be reading from your spine or your quote unquote textbook. So you'd be reading from this and then you can see it's not overwhelming an amount of reading, especially since we've done Torchlight the last couple of years. This is actually not bad at all. This is our normal read aloud we do with Torchlight. So we would read that every day and it's a four day program. And then we would do our historical fiction and it tells you which chapter's there to do here. So we would read out of that. I really like, we're talking about the time, we're bringing in that historical fiction and it does have some experience things you can do to make it more hands-on. Talking about eating with organic co or eating corn, and discuss the importance of corn. It does have watching um, video links as well. There is a already set up YouTube playlist where you can click all these things. There's also a Spotify list, which I really appreciate because it's less that I have to arrange myself or go through and figure out which video I want. It's just set already for me to go. And then um, these are your discussion and reflection questions. And I really do like the parent notes on the bottom. It tells you, it gives you ideas what you can do to learn more for yourself, to educate yourself. And people and places overview of that. And that's, that's what you get. That's an entire week. And one thing I did want to mention because I do choose secular curriculum, but we are a Christian family. I have many videos discussing why that is. But one of the things I really liked about this curriculum is it does have an optional free prayer supplement. Now, this might be something weird to be talking on a secular channel, but I think it's really actually well put together because a lot of religious based curriculum I find, especially with history, is very biased and very through a certain perspective. This, I did not find that at all. So it's just a um, quick overview of how you can talk about your beliefs and how they fit into this. Because you're going to be talking about some really heavy stuff and religion does affect some of these areas, absolutely. So being able to talk to your children about that I think is really important. And she gives some different ideas of how to do. And again, this is a free downloadable resource. I keep it right over there. So that is something I think we will utilize as well. So that is all of week one. And then you go into week two here. So same thing, you're gonna be reading before Columbus. It tells you when you're gonna start a new one right here. Your, so those would be your spines and then you're gonna have your, the game of silence. So that would be your historical fiction and it tells you when to read that. And then it has your experience. So it has something you can watch, visit native land to find which native nations you currently are living in, read poetry. So I really do like that this experience part is included, but it's not overwhelming. It's not giving you 30 different craft projects to do. I am a crafting person in general, but I don't always think there's a lot of value added to just busy work craft projects. I don't think it's always worth your time. So I like that it just gives you a couple options to work from. Watch something, 
learn about native land that you currently inhabit, discussion, reflection questions, notes for yourself, for you as the educator, but as a person in general, just to learn more key places. So week three, Encounters with Columbus. You're gonna read again from your spines. You're gonna have your historical fiction. You're going to have your experiences. So you're gonna read some poetry. They have the On the O Freedom video playlist that you can access, some different things you can watch, discussion reflection, parent notes. So that goes on for the first six weeks and then you get to week six, which is a dig deeper section. This is a week where you can get a chance to catch up on reading if you fell behind in it or to dig deeper into an area. And it gives you some options for that. You know, you can do different research projects. You can do deeper discussion. You can look further into the books and learn more. And I really like, you know, you can do field trip ideas. So I like that it gives you this week to really, there's no schedule, there's nothing specific you need to do. But if you want to dive deeper, into a certain part or maybe do some of those activities you didn't get to, you can do it now. So I like that it has this kind of breather with every six weeks because we do six weeks on, one week off. So this works perfectly into our schedule and it's done with that for every six weeks. So you can see here we have another six or another five and then your last week would be a dig deeper. You can watch certain things. So that is the third through seventh. So I'm going to show you the K through second because it recently was released and it was something I was definitely interested in. So I figured I'd show you guys. So this is the O Freedom Conscious U.S. History for Beginners. Now this mainly uses picture books. So I'm going to incorporate both of them. And there is a part in here that tells you how to incorporate them because there's different units as I will show you here. Same thing about the curriculum you're using older kids how to incorporate it in here but it does line up each of these units lines up with what you're learning about in the older version the third through seventh which is really nice so what it gives you is a unit so it gives you some books you can use these are the main books you're going to pull from your objectives your vocabulary and different activities you can do now what i did with this is uh, I, again, checked my library first, checked Hoopla, checked Libby, see what options were available. But I chose at least two books from every uh, one of these units, two books from every one of these units to introduce the topic before we discuss it in the older version. So every single time we start a new week, we will start with one of those books. And again, it gives you that activity stuff if you want to do that, but there's no pressure. It gives you a supplies list because I will show you in a minute. Here's the layout of it. So it does give you some journaling as well. So the people shall continue. I will show you really quick some of the picture books. Again, these are not necessary. My library did have a lot of options, but there are some I wanted to have on my bookshelves. So this is one of them. And I do like that it covers a pretty large span of time. So these are the ones I chose to pick up in addition, in addition to what my library has. So that gives you a quick overview of some of the books, but obviously there's a lot of resources you can do. So most of the units start out with reading a section from here. Uh, gives you some, you know, pre-activities you can do. Use Google image to show the different regions listed on the story. And then it gives you a hands-on activity to do. Again, so if you're that crafty or you're just dealing with younger kids, this is really nice that if you're not going into that really in-depth conversation, a nice introduction. So this would be the next story. So again, it's just the story. 
So quick, uh, quick discussion questions, your hands-on activity, and that's it. Same thing, it's gonna keep going. Story, this is your story you're going to read. Some prompting, your activity. And it will continue on for that until you get the next unit. Again, it will give you the books, it will give you your objectives, it will give you some things to watch or unit activities to do. And there are coloring pages included with both sets. So it'll give you the supplies list needed for that unit, a journal activity. There are some coloring pages included with this. There was an extra where you could buy the like kids journal version of it for the younger kids. So I bought it because it was a released, um, it was released on sale, so I figured why not. So some of the coloring pages you would get So my youngest really does enjoy coloring and she loves coloring portraits of people. So I think she will really enjoy this and I think it will be nice for her when we're reading some of those more intensive textbook type uh, spines. This will be fun for her to do. And again, what I like about these two-tone binders is there's a pocket here so I can keep those here, but there's also a pocket here. So these are, I put this in back, these are the ones, activities we won't be getting to because these are the books I did not get. And it, it could be one of those things where you get to those books at a later time, but I printed it all at the same time and I wanted to make sure I had a section for that. So going back to this section over here, the younger kids, the K through second, does have a quilt project as well. So the kids can color a quilt for each thing they learn. And by the end, they would have a story quilt, as you can see here. And it tells you how to assemble it. And there are parts where they can write or draw a picture if they don't want to color. So I think what I might do is have my oldest write something that she found was interesting or important, and that would be kind of our story quilt, but it gives you the uh, pictures for that and coloring and all that. So I hope that gives you a good overview of kind of the curriculum, the resources, and why I'm so excited to dive into this and just really dive into the discussion. And I think that's more the important things. We're not big on, you know, timelines or remembering every historical figure, but really understanding what was going on at the time, what things were learned, what things happened, the overall themes of what was going on for history. And it is definitely more outside my normal comfort zone. I'm, I'm a very structured person, and this is more reading and exploring. So I'm excited to try that different aspect than we have before and dive into some different ideas and thoughts and not have such a structured schedule. But as you can see, as I showed you the schedules both um, in the video, it's really structured quite well that it gives you an you know a outline to work from, which is exactly what I need. I don't need a million resources. I need a basic outline. I need some prompting questions, discussion questions to make sure I'm talking about things that are important and respectful to those groups of people. And then if we want to do some extra activities, watch some videos, that's great. It's all there. So I'm really excited for both the curriculums I talked about. I'm really excited to get in some deeper level thinking, critical thinking, discussion. That's what's really the, mo the best part, I think, about homeschooling, being able to have those really deeper level discussion questions. And now that my oldest is getting, you know, she's going into fifth grade next year, she's starting to be able to have a lot more intricate discussions. So if you have any questions about anything I showed, leave them in the comments below. If not, thank you for watching.